Hey guys, it's Sean. This is Devlog8. Made some more optimizations for zombies. Thanks to Digital Wasteland Gaming, who suggested you could use a raycast to toggle Ragdoll on and off. To toggle the zombie's physics, I added a small collider around the zombie that detects objects with a certain tag. Once it detects the object with the tag, it will then turn on the zombie's physics. Then once the zombie is out of range of the object, it will start a small timer to turn off the physics. Since some weapons have a knockback effect, the knockback won't actually occur until the zombie's physics is turned on. So to turn on the zombie's physics, I added a raycast that shoots to where the player is aiming. And when it detects a zombie, it will toggle the physics on or off. Having the physics toggle on only when needed resulted in a huge performance boost compared to before. This allowed me to reach a higher AI count without sacrificing the pushing ragdoll feature. Another suggestion made was to also check out DOTS, which is Unity's data-oriented tech stack. In layman's terms, it makes your game run better. It's quite a big learning curve, but it was interesting to see what DOTS was capable of. As for now, since the scope of the project is small, I might leave learning DOTS for bigger future projects. Added a new sheet item. Once the player has sheets in their inventory, they could then be used to cover up windows. Later on, I want to add the function to harvest sheets from beds and stuff. Added a function to cover windows with sheets. By blocking windows with sheets, it stops zombies from looking in. So when the line turns green, they can see the player. But when it's orange, it means that the object is in the way. Taking off sheets will sometimes refund the sheet to your inventory. Added a barricade function on doorways. When the player has planks in the inventory, they can barricade a doorway which blocks the path for units. They can also be taken off as well and has a chance to be refunded. Added a skin randomizer when zombies spawn in so I don't have to look at the same guy every time. I know the melee in this game looks substandard. It just shows one animation for each weapon and it looks horrible. I definitely want to change these later on. I added two new moves, the spider kick and the dead space stomp. Both work well with the zombies physics. For the melee system, I wanted a way for the player to easily choose between different kinds of attacks. For example, I could have binded the kick to the G button and the stomp to the H button, but there's only so many buttons on the keyboard and I wanted something a little more dynamic. So I grabbed the idea from games like For Honor and Mordow, where it checks the direction the player has last pointed and when attacking it activates the corresponding attack. I made a similar function where it checks the last position of the mouse then prints what the next attack will be. Right now it just detects the up and down values but with this implemented into the melee system the range of possibilities widen. So when I look up the next kick will be the spider kick and when I look down the next kick will be the stomp. I've been playing around with the rigid body component of furniture to try and get that sweet spot for realistic effect on blocking zombies. For example things like the couch are heavy and require more force to move and light things like the table can be pushed out of the way easier. Right now now moving objects feels like the player is just levitating the object with their mind. Levitating objects is needed so that the player can move smaller items around exactly how they want it. It's pretty much just for personalizing the home area. But applying this during comment does feel a little off. Not sure if I should add an extra function for furniture specifically, like a realistic drag and pull motion so that placing the object is quicker but at the expense of not getting it exactly how the player wants it. Maybe I'll have an example for both in the next devlog so you guys can see. Alright guys, that's all for now. Let me know what you think below. Hover over the like button and press the left mouse button. Then proceed to apply the same method on the subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.